Death Note is a very interesting work, an intricate look of what may happen if it was possible to kill someone with just a few simple pen strokes. Or a few very complicated ones. As an overdramatized and sometimes quite over the top anime, most accept it as one of the best fictional pieces out there. But what about those who don't accept that? Not the part about being one of the best out there, but the fictional part. Today we'll be taking a look at some of the interesting and sometimes downright disturbing consequences of just those people. I was researching for the other Death Note video I just put out when I happened across some interesting articles about Death Note copycats. Now, I was somewhat uh, excited at first, intrigued figuring I would find some terrible Death Note knockoffs like Note of Death or Killer Notebook, but instead found something quite different. Turns out, many students have gotten into trouble for believing their favorite anime to be just a bit too real, and some adults have also gotten themselves in trouble by adoring Kira just a bit too much to very violent and saddening results. But let's start off with the students. Most people would probably accept that fights in a school tend to be a pretty physical thing, punch for a punch, and so on. But some students thought it was better to take a path more like light, even if just for their own amusement rather than actual retribution. From just after its release in the states up until now, students across the US and a couple times in other countries have been caught with replica death notes in school, oftentimes with their classmates' names written down in them. One such incident in New Hampshire got quite specific in 2015 when a 15 year old student was found with 17 names along with the specifics that Light often left out, the dates and circumstances of their deaths. Although most of the results of this action were handled calmly and internally by the school, some parents were still shook up with one saying, I pray with every ounce of my being, but it's never something that would turn into a tragedy. But how do you know it wouldn't? How do you know this isn't the beginning of a tragic situation? Although the New Hampshire incident was actually handled quite well, the same can't be said about a similar one in Alabama. There in 2008, a pair of 6th graders were actually arrested for a death note incident. The two boys shared a note and wrote not just names of their classmates in, but also some of the faculty as well, which was quickly deemed as terroristic threats when the book was found. The students explained their behavior as a joke, but the police were quite staunch in their stance, stating, no matter what age the students are, in light of what has happened recently in Georgia and other incidents around the country, we consider all threats to be a very serious matter. It's unclear exactly what incidents are being referenced, however, it is clear that they could have been under a bit of a scare recently. Still, I don't think that's really much of an excuse to rest a couple of 6th graders, though. Feels like Alabama went a little bit overboard there. Continuing to ride the overboard train all the way into the next town of Albuquerque, New Mexico, whose public school district considered banning the Death Note series from its schools in 2010. Actually though, it was kind of more like a few parents wanted it banned as the appointed committee went unanimously against the ban. And some of the school district's libraries actively carry the manga for its students as well. Now one advocate of the ban said, Killing is just not something we should put out there for kids to read in this way. But at this moment, I would like to point out that Romeo and Juliet is a standard read for students around the start of their teenage years, and that work openly talks about killing and deflowering virgins, and follows a man ranging from 16 to 21 who wants to run away with a 13 year old girl, and they both eventually commit hyper reactive suicide. Not saying Death Note is spotless, but Really people, come on, pick your battles a bit better. Sometimes however, these cases end up being all bluster and caution with no actual substance. One of these was from 2016 in America's most exciting state, Ohio. The Lakewood school district there at its middle school was having a fandom day where one student decided to show her passion for Death Note. Unfortunately, she may have been a bit too enthusiastic as she crafted a replica death note and wrote down some of her actual fellow classmates' names in it. A pretty good prop idea, but a terrible place for it. Once found, she explains its origins to the anime, but the school nonetheless opened an investigation and had her suspended for three days, although in their later statement they did admit there was no evidence she intended any harm to her fellow students. 
at least she has a story to tell all of her anime loving friends for the rest of time. The girl told authorities she was copying a children's TV show called Death Notes. Now, there's many more incidents just like these, mostly with similar details. However, some are more serious, calling attention to mental health issues facing children. Although most of us see these as simple incidents, they do have to be taken seriously to a degree, if only to ensure that the one doing the writing is in a sound state of mind. At least once, though, the tables were turned to a teacher being the culprit. In Japan's Fukushima Prefecture, an elementary school teacher was using the anime to actively threaten his students. To do this, he loaded an image of a death note on his tablet and showed it to the students, stating, I'll write your name in a death note. After using this threat on four separate 6th grade students, he was reprimanded and the school issued an official apology. Although it's somewhat comical to hear about, it is pretty inappropriate for a man in his 30s to threaten 11 year olds with death even if it is an anime reference. Sometimes however these incidents have no comedy at all to them, like the case of a 15 year old girl in Russia who committed suicide leaping from her 13th story apartment. What connects this to Death Note is her last written words of I can't live anymore which were found on her copies of the Death Note manga. A tragic case which spurred a local parents group to advocate for the banning of Death Note in Russia, even going so far as to pen an open letter to Vladimir Putin after the 2013 incident, which received no reply. Although no connection directly was drawn to the manga, the parents group said it arouses interest of death in children, which isn't entirely untrue. This case speaks mostly to the importance of protecting youth not in a sheltered way keeping all danger away from them, but nourishing their growth and exploring difficult topics with them so they can be mentally prepared for the often taxation of life. And from one tragic topic to another, we reach the most shocking real life reference to Death Note the world has ever seen to date. While most of these incidents haven't seen harm placed from one group to another, this one did. On September 28, 2007, around 6 p.m., a pair of hikers found human body parts in St. Giles, Belgium's Durden Park. Specifically uncovered was a male torso and two thighs detached from the body. It was determined that the remains were deposited there earlier in the day after the man was killed days earlier. Nearby were two notes with the phrase, Watashi wa kiru desu, a misspelling of the phrase, Watashi wa kiru desu, meaning I am Kira, the phrase obviously being lifted from Light Yagami in Death Note. Creating an even stranger scene, a 15 meter trail of rice was found left by the suspect, which led to a large symbol drawn through the grass in mud suspected to be a Japanese character. With this limited info to go on, the case went cold for a while. But three years later, on Monday, September 20th, 2010, the killers were apprehended by the Belgium Federal Police Force, along with a fourth man charged with failure to provide assistance to a person in danger, having been at the scene of the crime, but not being one of the killers. It was determined that the suspect and victim knew each other beforehand and got into a heated argument, which resulted in the victim's death after the situation eventually turned physical. The notes were left because the killers were simply fans of the Death Note manga, and after three years, the case dubbed Manga Mord, or Manga Murderer, was finally solved, quite possibly one of the darkest effects of anime and manga on the real world, even if its inclusion may have just been an afterthought by the murderers, and one we can all hope never gets repeated or topped by anything else. Anyway, that will finish things up for this video, sadly ending on quite a somber note there. But this is quite a new thing for me. I've never done a video about uh, anime history or something real world about anime that was focused mainly on me speaking to you on camera the whole time. So I would appreciate any feedback you have on this video uh, greatly, even more than ever, because it is something very new to me. So, you know, all the usual things here. If you liked it or disliked it, leave the appropriate button press to let me know and I can look at the analytics and see if you guys want more of this. You could also leave me a comment knowing, uh, letting me know what you thought of the video, if there's any Anything you think I missed or anything else you'd like to add to the discussion leave that down below because that is one of my favorite parts of doing this is uh, interacting with the community 
Speaking of interacting with the community, I'll have a link to my Discord down in the description as well, which is somewhere you can reach me directly, talk anime with a few other fans, and some cool things like that. Anyway, other than that, there's just the other videos on screen if you want a bit more of me in your life today. I don't know why you would, but you could. And I'm starting to ramble, so I should probably just stop this video here and things off and say thank you for watching, and I hope I'll see you again soon.